Oh, one too many. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. Uh, but, okay, what is that? <laughs> okay, this isn't my shop, but uh, we're actually here with uh, Christopher, a good friend of mine, a uh, watcher of the channel, and today we are going to be building a square. So I'm um, using tools here, and you can have a lot of fun. So let's uh, dive into it and see what we can make today. Sounds good. <laughs> This is an old design, but we are going off of this article from Christopher Schwartz from a while ago. The two main beams are made out of maple, and the cross member is made out of walnut. It's all rough sawn, so we need to bring it down to dimension and stock. The Christopher Schwartz design has it a bit thinner, but we're going to make them out of uh, three-quarter. We're making a few other changes over time, but uh, I went through a video a while ago on dimensioning lumber, so I'm not going to go into that in too much detail, but we're going to scrub plane it down, flatten one side, and then joint another side to be 90 degrees to it, and then continue the process around the board. So this is a fairly straightforward system. The next thing we need to do is actually rip these to length, uh, rip them to width, and they will be about uh, two and a half inches um, wide, so we need to rip them all down. Handsaw it makes fairly quick work. Next up, the joinery holding the two beams together is actually going to be a bridle joint, and so I'm going to be marking out with marking gauge, and I don't have a mortising marking gauge, so I'm using one marking gauge for one side of the line and another one for the other side of the line. I did a whole video on doing uh, bridle joints as well, so if you want to see that, you can uh, go take a look at that video. It goes into a lot more depth. But to uh, cut out the shoulders, I just put that in a vise and cut across it. Do basically the exact same thing with the cheek, just chopping down. Once I have the waist removed, I can come in and clean it up and trim it. I do like to uh, um, cut back just a little bit to make that line look a little bit sharper. Next up, I need to remove the space from the mortise, and so I just do that by chopping down and then chopping in and removing that large chunk. And it goes fairly quickly to go back and forth. Chop down, remove out, chop down, remove out. Simple and fun process. And when it's done, you get a really nice, tight, clean fit as long as you're uh, set up well and go to your lines. And voila, a bridle joint. Now the next step is actually doing the half lap joint for the cross member. So we're going to remove half the material from the cross member and half the material from the two beams. And to start the layout, I'm actually going to put it out on the two beams and then use a marking knife to mark precisely where it intersects with the beams and where the beams intersect with the cross member so that I can transfer all those marks. Then I can make a mark right down the center of the board and this will be what I cut to. Um, making sure that I reference the same face on all boards. For the shoulders, I just use a square to mark across the edge so that I know not only where to stop cutting, um, but what line to cut along. Then I do like to make a little knife wall for this, um, especially because it is at an odd angle and uh, kind of feels weird. Uh, making this knife wall gives it a place for the saw to fit into. And then I can use the uh, cross-cutting saw to slowly work down to the stop mark I made. Do this at both ends of the cut, and then I can take a chisel and remove most of the waste in those two lines. After removing most of the waste with the chisel, a uh, router plane is really a great way to come in and clean this out. It's a lot of fun and a quick way to get a really nice, clean, flush surface in the bottom that's perfectly parallel to the outside surfaces. And uh, yeah. <laughs> just a, a joyful tool. The uh, half lap on the cross member is the exact same thing. Make a knife wall, cut it out, and uh, then remove it. The only difference with this one is after cutting the shoulder here, uh, rather than coming with a chisel and a, uh, a router, I find it a lot easier to actually put it up in a vise and just cut it down with the shoulder. Uh, because I don't, have a, I don't have a shoulder on the other side, I can just cut the cheek straight down. And with a little bit of practice, this actually goes really quickly and really easily and then tell you can remove that in one chunk. <laughs> now it's time for the test fit, and I can see how I need to actually do this before clamping it up. Does anything need to be adjusted? Does anything need to be tweaked? Uh, is it all ready to go? 
but after the test fit we can actually start doing um, some of the details and decorative points. Um, I don't want to do these after glue up, I want to do them before glue up so that they're a little easier to work with. On mine I'm creating like this little uh, ball on the end, it's kind of a Celtic design um, and just simple and fun. You don't have to go by the actual design, you can just actually shape it. I'm just using a, a chisel to actually come in and shape out the the, the ball, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's probably some technical term, but oh well. <laughs> then after shaping it with a chisel, um, I'll use a file rasp or float to actually smooth it out and give it a nice shape. Kind of like the way it ends up being and uh, just kind of a simple and easy design. <laughs> but after doing one end, I can lay it on top of the other one and trace it out and that way the two ends match and it goes a little bit easier so I don't have to try and make it out that way. Uh, Christopher is actually doing something a little different on his, a little bit more of a, a traditional design, but uh, something that he likes. Then we can start the glue up. I'm just using some tight bond 2 and smearing it on the surfaces, flattening it out, and uh, then putting it together. I'll start by putting the half lap, the uh, bridle joint together, and then putting in the cross member, um, wiggling it into place. Now, before it actually sets up, you need to be very careful here because at this point, you're making the difference between an interesting piece of decoration and a square. So I want to make sure that it is fairly nice and square before I'm doing the final glue up. I'm using this um, fourth clamp to uh, slide it a little bit more between the point and the cross member to bring it back into square. Now, once that's drying up, I'm actually going to do some pins through all the joints. And after those have completely dried and set in place, um, I'll be putting these pins in place. Just a little piece of 3 8 um, oak. Actually, I think it's 3 16 it's not 3 8 sorry. <laughs> now here's where everything goes way wrong. This is the weirdest brace I've ever used in my life, but it is what I had to drill the hole. Um, but it works. You just have to be very careful. It will run away and you know, lop, lop off fingers if you're not careful. <laughs> but after drilling some holes, I can just put those dowel chunks into the holes and uh, glue them in. And voila, a little bit of decoration, a little bit of functionality, and you have a square. I want to cut off these ears on either side. I'm just using a saw to uh, slowly remove them, making sure that I'm staying away from it because I can plane them back smooth to the surface. Then on the uh, dowels, I want to use a flush trim cut and then I'll come in with a chisel and smooth them out. Just make sure not to overshoot and uh, garnish the wood like that. Uh, but the chisel does make a really good job of cleaning it up nice and smooth. I'll use a smoothing plane to smooth out all the surfaces and make it look pretty. And then the very important step, the final step, is actually making it a square. And so I'm using this square to see um, where does material need to be removed and then removing it with a plane to give myself a nice square and true edge. And I can actually test that out um, on a other piece of wood. Now, like most anything, I want to do some carving in this. And this Celtic rope was just a fantastic thing. I found this uh, pattern that I went around and I just kind of made some additions to it and put in these corner pieces. And I really like how it came out. Uh, it was about an hour's worth of carving, but well worth it. With some boiled linseed oil and paste wax, I was able to seal it in really nicely and it really makes that carving pop. Christopher actually just used a beeswax finish on his, and I really like how his also came out. But uh, yeah, here is the finished product on mine with the, uh, the Celtic carving. I'm really happy with how it came out, looking forward to it in the future. This is Christopher's design, very simple and straightforward. I really like the way it came out. It's uh, just a sharp, classical look. His is actually designed to fit inside of his work chest, so it's a little bit smaller than mine. So you just uh, saw how I finished mine at home, um, since they're not quite done with them yet. But you saw them done, so I'm going back in time. Oh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> time travel, gotta yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. This has been an absolute blast. Um, thanks for having me in the shop. I'm glad to have you here. It's been a wonderful day. Yeah, we've got to do that again sometime. Absolutely. Sounds, Sounds great. Yeah, I hope you like it. Um, a very simple way to make a, uh, a square for uh, whatever you need for square. And uh, I'm looking forward to playing with this thing in the future. So, All right. Thank you very much. That's about it for today. Uh, if you like the video, please go ahead and hit that like button and feel free to smash the subscribe button. Also, I want to say an incredible thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why this channel keeps rolling. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can click the link right over here. 
Also, if you like this video, feel free to check out one of my others. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.